Welcome to part three of our video series on rope specs and what to consider when buying a new rope. In this video, we're talking about impact force, dynamic and static elongation, and rope weight and length. In our previous videos, we hit on middle markers, the sheath and rope diameters in part one. And in part two, we talked about falls and factor two falls. All right, let's dig in. Impact force is the force that's transmitted by the rope to the climber. Now, naturally, there's different things that can contribute to that force, like if the belayer gets pulled up or the belayer jumps a little bit to provide a soft catch, but we're gonna ignore that. We're just gonna look purely at the rope's contribution. According to the UIAA, the impact force cannot exceed 12 kilonewtons. And they came up with that number because uh, military did tests on people and they found that 12 kilonewtons is the maximum force the body can physically withstand on deceleration. Um, a lot of us maybe aren't familiar with kilo kilonewtons, but we are familiar with G's, the G force. Um, 12 kilonewtons is equivalent of 15 G's. So put that into context, most roller coasters max out at around five G's. So yeah, uh, 12 kilonewtons is quite a bit of force. Here when they did the testing on this rope, the max impact force was measured at 8.2 kilonewtons. Now the impact force is gonna be affected by how dynamic or stretchy the rope is. And this is called dynamic elongation. For a dynamic climbing rope, we must have dynamic elongation between 10% and 40%. Anything less than 10% is considered a static rope. You don't wanna fall on a static rope. Impact force is just gonna be quite high and probably cause some injury. But also on the flip side, if the rope's too stretchy, you might hit the ground because uh, the rope elongates too much. You kind of think of like a, a bungee jump, right? Those are super stretchy ropes that they're using. So here you can see the fixed Suriana has a dynamic elongation of 33%. You've made the connection here that the greater the dynamic elongation, the softer the impact force, but also the greater the elongation, the bigger the fall is gonna be, which you can imagine some scenarios where that could be a problem. Um, like if you're climbing on a wall with lots of ledges, but frankly, there is no magic number for dynamic elongation. It all comes down to a matter of preference and the type of climbing that you're doing. Um, if you're projecting hard, steep climbs, you might consider a more dynamic rope. If you're doing multi-pitch climbs with lots of ledges, you might consider something with lower dynamic rating. But often there are other factors like the length, weight, endurance, by pattern, um, that have more influence over a rope purchase than the dynamic elongation rating. The other form of elongation that's measured and reported on in rope labels is static elongation. This is the stretch that occurs when you're hanging on a rope. So you can think of it as the ground that's lost when you're top roping and you take a rest. Like, oh man. The way that they test this is they take 176 pounds and they hang it on a rope. See how much it stretches. UIAA requirements are um, the static elongation must not exceed 10%. And we look at our label over here. You can see that for the fixed Suriana, the static elongation is 4.9%. Now let's take a look at weight and length. This is the last item on our list. Most ropes are gonna present the weight in grams. And so here it's grams per meter of rope. And it's 59 grams for this rope, grams per meter. And the length is 70 meters. Common rope lengths are 60 meters, 70 and 80 meters. Basically 70 meters is a good length that works for most routes. 
Um, now, there's always exceptions, of course. If you frequent a crag that has really long single pritz routes, you might consider an 80 meter rope. But in most cases, it's not necessary and it's just more weight to carry. 60 meters, though, um, used to be really popular, but it's really commonly becoming too short for many routes. Where weight comes in, if you have long approaches or are doing multi pitch routes, the, the weight of the rope can be a big factor in your purchase. So here's how to calculate it. So you're going to take uh, the number of grams listed on the rope and you're going to multiply that by the number of meters. So in this case here we've got 59 grams by 70 meters. Do a little conversion um, and that equals 9.1 pounds and that is actually quite a light rope. So that wraps up the rope specs. If you learned something from this video, we'd love it if you gave it a like and a subscribe to our channel. Go visit us at commonclimber.com where we have monthly online magazine. Hey, thanks for checking us out and happy climbing.